Well, welcome back to Crowley House Flower Farm. Today I'm going to be talking to you all about how we take care of our roses this time of year when we're pruning and just cleaning up the under uh, side of all the roses and how we fertilize to produce lots and lots of blooms for cut floral production. Roses have a reputation of being kind of finicky, hard to grow, and that is true to a point. You just kind of have to know a little bit about your actual growing conditions, what roses like your climate. There's ones that prefer a little bit cooler and there's ones that can tolerate a lot of heat. A lot of the new varieties, um, the more modern varieties that they've bred, have less disease issues. And so those can be a little bit easier to grow and less problems. And so if you are just starting out, kind of read through some labels and figure out what rose grows best for you. One, in your climate. Two, uh, what is the most disease resistant? This year, actually, we've got several varieties that have not done super great for us. One of them is a very loved Coco Loco. And I think I figured out the reason for it. And that is because we have had a couple really, really hot summers and especially some hot days during those summers. And Coco Locos don't do super well with that heat or kind of drought kind of uh, conditions. Uh, they're, they're a little bit more finicky than like say a distant drum which does amazing for us. So this year I'm actually taking them out and I'm gonna throw them on the burn pile and burn them. So don't be afraid to eliminate a crop or a rose that is not doing super well for you or performing anything that is weak or just diseased or just not putting off the oomph it should be for your cut flower production. So that's what I'm doing. I am pulling them out. I am destroying them. There was just a few plants that actually made it and I'm keeping those. But unless I go and buy more and just plant them and plant them every couple years, it's just gonna be um, nixed from what we're doing. So I've been just pulling out a few of these roses here. We've had in this patch for about eight or nine years, might be wrong, but I think that it's been that long. Um, so I feel like after a time, they just kind of aren't as good. A lot of them are just growing up the suckers, so um, they're not producing any flowers, just these long whips with just leaves. And they're really annoying to try to walk through the rows with because they tangle all in other roses. So um, the master plan is to actually take this patch out anyways um, but for this year we're taking out the bad ones and then um, keeping some of the good ones in here pruning them see how they do this year we are going to take out the good ones as well so this whole patch is going to be turned into lawn and um, yeah it'll be exciting I'm excited for this patch to be opened up but they're just going to go to the back and uh, we'll get our roses from there <laughs> from now on So like Emma said, this whole little area here is going to be turned into a, I kind of want it to become like a walled garden just because we've got parking over here you can see and people when they come there's a lot of parking and I kind of want to wall that off so I was thinking about putting in some yew. I also ordered some David Austin roses that are climbing and so I'm going to kind of make like a little area where you kind of walk through and then this is going to turn to grass and then behind me there is a building. Yep. Uh, that is going to eventually turn into a barn that's a little bit more suitable. That was here when we got here and it just hasn't really served a very good purpose. And uh, so it's time in the next, I just got to save some pennies. In a little while, um, in a couple years, probably a year or two, we'll be able to put that in. But we're just prepping the gardens for that. I also have over here some mock orange. So this is mock orange, which needs to be cleaned up. 
we also had this is kind of like I call it a weed this is um, sun choke all through here and um, so the sun choke needs to come out and just be cut down we'll deal with that later but this is where the barn's gonna go eventually it'll have an awning on it that overlooks this whole area here and then these are the roses that we're kind of taking out any of the ones that are really bad and moving the good ones to the back and then you can kind of tell there's a little bit of a hedge of a rose they they were there when we moved here so i'm thinking about doing my david austin roses tracy over at just dig it farm and cog hill both have put in these i don't i'm not sure exactly what they're called but it's like a um pillars with like some roses growing on them so we ordered some climbing roses david austin's and then just from the house if you can imagine where the kitty kitty is but right between those two windows coming through here there'll be some sort of archway or something to get into this space. It's gonna be a little bit more of a private garden. But yeah, it's perfect for moving roses right now. We've got beautiful weather here on the farm and um, we're just keep, we keep going, we keep going. Anytime we have beautiful weather like this, we just keep working and tackling all the things that need to be done. <laughs> So for the new walled rose garden, I'm going to call it for now, um, what I got so far is the Sally Holmes Climbing Rose. Now that rose is a beautiful kind of a white blushy colored. It's a repeat bloomer and it grows to a height of 10 feet. So I want that really big, voluptuous, beautiful bloom. I've coupled that with Crown Princess Margaret because I love that. I have that in my other garden, but I have more of a bush type variety. And this is the Climbing Rose. So this is gonna grow quite tall and that's gonna be popped in with those. I also got a um, carding mill, which is, um, we got three carding mills. I, we get that request a lot for that rose. And so I got some of those and I got one other, I can't remember what it is. I will try and remember and put it here um, for you. But so all of them, I've got some bush roses and then I've got the climbers that are gonna go up. And I just wanna spot that color around because a lot of the colors I got were kind of like a, a uh, kind of corally orange color and then we popped it in with that Sally Holmes which is going to be beautiful and big and voluptuous so I got three of the Sally Holmes and then I've got three uh, no two of the Crown Princess Margaret the ones that kind of trellis up so so I got five roses all together I think um I might add more to it. I haven't completely designed that garden, but I think it's going to be really pretty and it'll be fun to have you guys tag along and just kind of see what we're doing and um, see if I completely fail or if it turns out really well. I am excited for this year's rose garden and um, just because we're putting a lot of time and energy into the rose garden, I haven't done that as much over the last two years but I feel like now the girls are really on board, both Emma and Riley, to um, make the roses what they are going to be and um, just beautiful. And, you know, they are a lot of work. That's it. That's it. That's all there is to it. It is a lot of work, but worth it, I think. Well, let me know in the comments below what you think or what roses you have growing or what you're most excited for this year with your roses. Uh, maybe some of the things that um, kind of troubleshooting some of these things that I'm kind of going through. I, I felt like it's definitely because of the heat that we had. I think it was 117 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, I was a little bit above that, I believe, um, two summers ago. And then last summer we got really hot again, long stretches with no rain and just, yeah, it's just hard on some varieties when they get that hot. And we're just not in a climate that tends to do that. And we just have mild summers, mild winters. And when we have those huge fluxes and then actually this year we got really, really cold for uh, a spell. I think we got down to 17 degrees, which is really cold for us. We just don't do that. Um, so things you definitely saw things in the gardens kind of say, hello, we don't like this. And so 
Um, it's just dealing with it. And I think that's fun as a gardener, just having to kind of figure out things as you go. And um, anyways, well, I am off to go prune some more roses. We're almost done. I have a few more rows to go. I think this is day five now for us. So I just have a few more leaves to take off and that's it. So today for lunch, I am actually making egg salad sandwiches, which we have not had in a very long time, but we have so many eggs. The chickens are just, just doing their thing. <laughs> I mean, they know that spring is coming. And so that that's kind of cool. Um, so we'll see. I haven't had them in a very long time. It kind of reminds me of being a kid in, in school and, um, but anyways, I think it should be quite tasty. The girls said that sounded delicious, so I'm gonna go in and make some egg salad sandwiches for them. So besides these David Austins, we do have some climbing roses and we also have some bush roses. I'm gonna take you through us trimming all of those just to kind of show you what we do here on the farm. And, but I'm gonna start with these David Austins. So I just wanted to show you a little bit. You can tell they are taller than me. So I am five, four and a half, I think. So I am going to take you through and just kind of show you what I'm gonna do. So you wanna go in and take the rows down by half, basically. Some places say by one third. We just kinda, because we have so many roses, we just go one half. And then you wanna make sure that all the leaves, like the, the leaves that have like black spot on them or dead and dying. And in our case, we did have a freeze. So some of the new ones were kinda budding out. So we kinda take those down. We struggle with our roses just not going dormant. I don't know if you do, but if you do, let me know in the comments if you struggle with that. They don't actually go completely dormant and lose all their leaves. So after you do that, then you wanna make sure and cut off any weak or stems that just aren't gonna produce rose, roses very well. So in our case, we want a really nice strong stem for the rose to um, butt up on and so that we can use it in arrangements and that kind of thing. So uh, I tend to pull anything off. This is, a, this is a marker that we use for, or the pencil that we use for, um, dahlias but this is a pencil so you want to take anything that's uh, smaller than a pencil off anything that looks really weak anything that's crossing anything that's dark in color and you know what I find that a lot of people worry about their roses way too much I tend not to and it kind of like just don't be afraid and you can just kind of do it and you'll learn and I, my roses just do great now we do live in an area where roses do amazing and so um the only thing we kind of struggle with is black spot and then some of the bugs that we get will be like the cucumber beetle or um what's the little rose it's like another little beetle that we get mainly in our back field we don't get it up here but uh so we do spray a little bit sometimes especially if we've got heavy rains coming and it's warm so that's the black spot and then so just using some sort of fungicide on it um, and then the other thing we do is uh, try and keep the area underneath our roses really really clean we're going to be cleaning up as we go we decided so some years we go through and we chop all the roses down to the half height then we go in and we clean out the centers and we clean out any debris and dead stuff but this year we're gonna do one row at a time. We're actually gonna do it from start to finish. And I feel like it's gonna be a little bit easier for us to manage. And partly because, I don't know about you, I tend to get bored with a job. And so if I have a rotation of a job makes this type of job when it's so such a big job that we have much easier to handle. So that's what we're gonna do this year. We've all decided on it. Emma is way over there. I don't know if you can see her, but she's way over there. 
um, starting to prune um, the roses on that side. So I'm tackling the David Austins first. I'm glad you're here with me. pruning these um, Queen Elizabeth Grandiflora roses right now and they're really nice for our mixed bouquets they're like a kind of almost a corally pink I would say yeah I'm okay. um, or and then they turn the more open that they are they get to a light pink cleaning them up there's a lot of they're pretty messy <laughs> so um, it'll be nice to get them cleaned up and um, looking really good for May So the Grandiflora roses are about the same way that you cut them like the David Austins. We tend to cut them a little bit harder just because we do use them for a cut flower. They are very vigorous. Queen Elizabeth um, rose is amazing. It's beautiful and it's got these really strong sturdy stems. Very, um, like there's not a lot of disease with it. And it was, um, I think it's from the 1950s kind of era. 1956 maybe and it was bred here in the United States by Dr. Walter something or other anyways it's beautiful and it has one like the best rose kind of thing so if pink's your color that one's a fun one to have on the farm so or in your garden So in pruning, I follow a few basic steps to do that. And one is I first start with just cutting down the height, just getting it to a manageable height for me to work and see, kind of. Step two is the three Ds, that is the dead, diseased, and damaged. So you're gonna remove all of the dead, diseased, and damaged canes, anything that's kind of, kind of spotted, yucky looking. Um, and don't be afraid to just get in there. Sometimes I have to use the big loppers to get in there and do that. Um, but a lot of times really sharp, good clippers will work really well. And um, then the next step would be to remove any of those really fine pencil -y, less than a pencil size, really weak stems. And then anything that's crossing that would be um, rub like rubbing against each other in high winds. Um, and just kind of clearing out the center to create that like more of a vase shape. And then lastly, I defoliate everything. So I take off any of the leaves that are left on and um, we start the fertilizing process with, I do a cup of the um, alfalfa pellet down and then just kind of work it into the soil a little bit. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of fertilizer. Today I am just using something I got at the hardware store and that's good for roses. Um, I think there's lots and lots of different things, like I said, that you can use. So just kind of use what you have on hand um, that will work well. I find that roses are just really not as picky as most people say. But again, I have selected everything other than the Copa Locos um, that have done really well here for us. So, so if you're doing all these steps to kind of, all these steps in pruning and then keeping up on the care of the roses as far as fertilizing and then um, 
you know, we'll do another fertilizer after the roses flush. And um, we kind of do another like cleaning up, kind of mid-season pruning, kind of taking off anything that looks kind of weird, shaping the plant. Um, and then we just kind of start over. We kind of look at the base, go from the base up, make sure that everything looks good. And then um, really keeping control of all the weeds. So that's what we're doing now is just kind of going through, getting rid of all the weeds, any of the debris. You know, it's just basic. So, and that's how we are able to produce so many blooms come the June. Usually it starts around June for us. And it's just beautiful, amazing. You, you guys, the smell here on the farm is so, so beautiful. Smells like roses. Um, we only have about a little under a thousand roses here on the farm. Well, other than the new David Austins that are coming, they are supposed to come today or tomorrow. I don't know. I was hoping to get it on this video. Maybe, maybe at the end of the video, I'll pop it in. Um, we'll see if they actually make it, and I'll talk about the varieties I got. I don't have my phone. I, I know the varieties I got, so maybe I'll do that. Okay, so I have my rose tone here. Uh, this is the organic. You don't have to go organic. This I just got, and it is something that a lot of gardeners know and use. So we'll use things in big bulk. Um, just we get it down at the local feed store, but it's like in big, huge bags. And we fill up big containers, and then we just kind of dip into that. So, But for today, this is what I'm using because everybody usually knows what this is, and you can kind of, you know understand that so i've got what i'm going to do first is go ahead and put down so i just have some alfalfa pellets i'm just throwing a couple handfuls down on each one so remember with alfalfa pellets this is we're feeding the soil first Super important for good roses. So it's important to read the back of the bag when you're planting, especially if you're planting bare root roses to kind of understand how much to add. So it's easy to get excited and put your want to put your roses right into the ground. But um, if you just kind of do a little bit of homework prior, then uh, you will be much happier later. So in reading this, though, they have um, instructions for planting a rose. So like a bare root rose without the soil and then with the soil versus an established rose. So with a bare root rose, you're going to add quite a bit more or quite a bit more of the fertilizer to the soil than with an established rose. So the established rose, I'm gonna um, add about a cup and a quarter. Make sure I can read, yes, I was right, cup and a quarter. <laughs> That's what we do and I've just kind of had that in my brain but it says cup and a quarter for sure. And then, um, so I'm just gonna sprinkle that around each rose and because we're having that rain tomorrow, I'm not gonna water it in. But if you live in a climate where you don't have rain, you wanna definitely water this in or make sure that where, so we have drip line going along our roses now. So just make sure that you have plenty of water that's gonna soak that area to get that, especially organic and, and, and in the pelleted form. If you were doing liquid, you know, that's a different story. So anyways, I'm just gonna take one of these, I got this cute little bucket well-loved bucket and I'm going to just take my compost and I'm gonna mix actually my cup and a quarter into each one and I'm eyeballing here so I like to mix that in partly because I don't know about you guys but um, like we have a dog and I think it's the fish that's in this and birds they tend to go through and pull some of the compost and eat it. Our dog does for sure. So um, that's kind of where I'm trying to get it so that the dog won't eat all the compost. So I'm just gonna take this and kind of go all the way around the plant.
have like another 999 to go. That's not overwhelming at all. So I'm just gonna keep working here. We've had a lot of rain. It's been just really, really yucky. Tomorrow we're supposed to get a half an inch of rain and then Monday we're supposed to get another inch of rain and we've had loads of rain already. So it's the season for us to kind of have these rainy spells. It's just really getting to everybody because it's just been not only rainy, but the weather has just been really kind of not, I guess it's been in the mid fifties, but it's, there's a wind and that's cold. So that the wind chill factor is just a little bit low. I think if you follow some of these great tips on just simple ways to get more blooms on your roses, you will see huge success this summer. It's really hard um, to cut your roses back so hard. And then you think, oh dear Lord, we're just not gonna have any blooms. But it actually really, really helps. And then you get nice, long, hardy stems that you can use as a cut flower. So Emma and I are called off our job of pruning roses. We're just gonna head in for a little bit. We're gonna actually put together an order of tulips um, because we have a little storm rolling through. It's almost 70 degrees today. Yeah. Really warm. Really warm. Um, and we just have a change in the system and so we've got a little bit of a thunderstorm coming and we thought, well, we have some indoor jobs. We could get out, duck out of the weather before the big rain comes. I like these days. Thunderstorms are my favorite. I know, so nice. It's weird in spring though, I feel like. And I feel it was just winter. Usually, yesterday feels like or a, two days ago, just winter. Something like a summer storm. But. Yeah, it does feel like a summer storm. I'm hot. Probably because we're used to cold. <laughs> <laughs> we're not acclimating. Well, you are because of Australia. I know, but I'm telling you, this is warm. <laughs> <laughs> it is warm. being naughty and chasing the other cat. You can't help it. I know. It's yeah. too tempting. So in the last hour, we've heard thunder keep getting closer and closer, and now it's right on top of us. So the girls literally just came in about 10 minutes ago, and then I got notice of a lightning strike less than a third of a mile away. So um, it's a good thing they came in. We're not seeing any lightning, but it's a lot of thunder. So, but our, and our, Radar app is showing the lightning strikes right here. Until next time, much success in all you do and grow, and we will be seeing you shortly back here at Crowley House very soon. Bye-bye.